let's talk waiver wire pitchers. And I've got four names in shallow leagues. I believe they're all between 65 and 80% rostered. Mackenzie Gore turned in a strong start Friday against the Mariners. Seven innings, one run, eight strikeouts with 17 whiffs on 98 pitches. And he's now turned in three straight quality starts. He's up to 76% roster. That is Mackenzie Gore. Luis Severino had one of his best starts of the season against the Giants. Seven innings, one run, six strikeouts with 10 whiffs on 103 pitches. Uh, tweaked the pitch mix a little bit in this one. He leaned on his sinker, which he continues to do this year. I, I think it kind of limits the upside for Luis Severino. Eric Fetty turned in a, another quality start up against the Orioles. Six and a third shutout. With six strikeouts, only seven whiffs on 103 pitches, but uh, it's now two earned runs or less in eight of 11 starts for Eric Fetty. And Christian Scott turned in another quality start. He was up against the Giants as well. Six innings, two runs, four strikeouts, only five whiffs on 94 pitches, and really lean into his fastball in the start, 68% usage. I feel like that's been the case the past couple of starts for mm -hmm. Christian Scott. I feel like he just hasn't had a great feel for his secondary pitches. Uh, but even with that, it's a 397 ERA, a 110 whip, and a 12.1% swinging strike rate for Christian Scott. Um, how would you rank this group, Chris? Scott, Fetty, Severino, and Mackenzie Gore. Gore is, I think, far and away number one for me, at least. Uh, it's been an interesting season because from the very first start of the year when he was throwing his fastball, you know, about two miles per hour harder and had this new changeup. There's been a lot of interesting things going on with him, but over the last three starts is when it's really turned into results that like are making an impact for your fantasy team. I think he should be 100% rostered. Really like what we've seen from Mackenzie Gore so far. After him, I think I go Fetty, Scott, and Severino. And maybe I'm just being unfair to Luis Severino and I'm not giving him credit for what, like you said, I think, maybe a lower ceiling because the strikeout upside isn't there, but might be a really high floor because of this high ground ball rate um, that's caused by the, the heavier sinker usage. I, I think Severino's fine. I, I think he's a, a useful pitcher to have on your roster moving forward, but I think there's more of a chance that Fetty and especially Christian Scott could be difference makers moving forward in a way that I, I think is less likely for Severino. Mm -hmm. I think I would take Scott ahead of Fetty. I, I think Scott versus Gore is really close. I I might take Scott in a points league and Gore in a categories league just because, like, I know Gore has three quality starts in a row, but he's usually inefficient, and he doesn't usually go that deep into his starts. But the strikeout upside is great, obviously, with Mackenzie Gore. Would you drop any of these four pitchers for any of the names I just mentioned? Uh, James Paxton, who had another rough outing. He's up to yeah, get him out of here. 86% roster. Like, it, it, like, okay, it's because he had a good ERA and I, I think had like five wins entering this start, if I'm remembering correctly, but like that was it. Yeah. He, he had more, I think he has as many walks as strikeouts for the season so. still. So, yeah, I, I have seen nothing to be optimistic about with James Paxton. You would drop um, him for any of those names? Any of those names, yes. What about Kyle Harrison, who gave up five runs, four earned over five innings this weekend yeah. and... He's up to a 390 ERA and a 130 whip. He's 82% rostered. Would you drop Kyle Harrison for any of them? I I want to say no because I still think Kyle Harrison can be a, a useful pitcher, but he's just he's throwing his fastball way too much. It's still like 70% usage, and it's a good fastball, but I'm not even sure it's like Bryce Miller good, and he's throwing it more than Bryce Miller. So I just... I, I don't know what the, the Giants are doing. I don't know what the approach here is. I don't know if they're ever going to try to have him throw that breaking ball and, and change up more, but I just I don't really believe in Kyle Harrison right now. Yeah, I think I would drop him for Scott and Gore. Yeah. The other ones are closer. Like I, I'd drop him for Fetty. For Fetty, yeah. yeah. I think that's probably all right. Uh, next name up is Reed Detmers, who had another, I mean, mass start. It was four walks, eight strikeouts, five innings, three earned runs up to a 576 ERA, a 143 whip. He, he's down to 62% rostered. Would you drop Detmers for any of those? Yeah, I mean, this is one of the, the pitchers I was thinking of when I was talking about Hunter Green earlier and how, like, there's, there seems to be very little hype and very little excitement. Nobody's, like, talking about Hunter Green. Like, you think about how much hype there was around Reed Detmers after the first four starts of the season. Yeah. 
And it, that hasn't made, and maybe it's just there. There's only so many players you can get excited about. Right. But yeah, I think you can, I would prefer not to drop Reed Detmers because we know how high the ceiling can be when he's right, but he just hasn't been for basically every start since those first four or so. So yeah, I, I think it's fine to drop Detmers. I probably wouldn't do it for Severino or Fetty, but I would rather have Scott and uh, Mackenzie Gore than Reed Detmers right now. I might be overreacting with this one, but Charlie Morton had a rough start on Monday. Five and two-thirds, 12 hits, eight earned runs, still had seven strikeouts, 429 ERA, 132 whip. It's it's not terrible by any means, but still 96% rostered. Uh, would you drop Charlie Morton for any of those? Uh, yeah. Yeah, he's been... His ERA is like over five, I believe, in the month of September. Or, uh, September, geez. It's Labor Day, Memorial Day. Yeah, uh, <laughs> since the start of May. Um, I just, yeah, I don't see what what Charlie Morton does that I'm supposed to be excited about at this point in his career, especially if Braves offense isn't going to be as good as we thought it was going to be. True. Both because it hasn't been so far and because Ronald Acuna is not there the rest of the way. So, yeah, I... I think Charlie Morton at 96% ro rostered is one of the most over rostered players in fantasy right now. All right. Waiver wire pitchers part two, Braxton Garrett turned in his first career complete game at the D backs, a team that typically hits lefties very well. well. Guess what? I mean, they still had 14 hard hits in this game and a 94.3 average exit velocity. Mm -hmm. Still a great start for Garrett Four hits shutout, uh, had six strikeouts, 11 whiffs on 95 pitches. He threw more changeups in this start, and, and that changeup actually is a pretty damn good pitch for Braxton Garrett. He is uh, only 50% rostered so far. Michael Waka has pitched well recently. He was at Tampa Bay, six innings, two runs, seven strikeouts with 14 whiffs on 94 pitches. Completely changed his pitch mix in this start. He threw his slider 28% of the time, Michael Waka did, and it's a small sample, but that slider has been awesome. So far, uh, 100 batting average against with a 45% whiff rate. That is Michael Waka. Robert Gasser turned in a strong start against the Cubs. Six shutout innings with seven strikeouts, which, which was a career high. He had 12 whiffs on 81 pitches. He's up to 47% rostered. And Ryan Weathers continues to pitch well. He was at the D-backs as well this weekend. Uh, six shutout, seven strikeouts with 12 whiffs on 91 pitches. Scott and I talk about this recently, like the changeup and the the sweeper, they look like great mm -hmm. pitchers for Ryan Weathers. I kind of wish that he would use them more, but it's five straight quality starts. And during that span, a 191 ERA, a .73 whip. Chris, how are you ranking this group? Weathers, Gasser, Waka, and Braxton Garrett. So for some context, if I had James Paxton and Charlie Morton, I would drop both of them for any of these pitchers. Uh, Braxton Garrett, Michael Walker, Robert Gasser, Ryan Weathers. I'd probably rank them Garrett. Not to be a homer. I think I go Garrett, Weathers, Gasser, Waka. Um, Gasser's a really interesting one because he got really good results in his first three starts, but it was with six strikeouts in his first 17 innings this season. He got a lot of strikeouts in the minors, though. And then in this one, seven in six shutout innings. 12 swinging strikes, six on his sweeper. And I think that's the thing is he, he might only have the one good swing and miss pitch, but he is leaning on his sweeper. It, it's been the, the most used pitch for him this season. There might be some like Brandon fought here where when it's ugly, it's really ugly for Gasser. But I think what he's done so far has been pretty impressive. So I, I don't want to write him off entirely. Garrett, I think just because he has the track record between 2022 and 2023 of, I think it's like a three, six ERA over 300 innings or so. Um, he's the clear top option, but I don't necessarily think there's a huge ceiling there. It's just a nice high floor for Braxton Garrett. Would you take Braxton Garrett over any of the four names from the first group? Scott, Fetty, Severino, and Gore? I I think him versus Severino and Fetty is very, very close because they're going to be guys who don't really get a ton of strikeouts. I think Fetty probably has the highest upside on the strikeout side, but ideally they're generating ground balls. They're not issuing free passes and, and they kind of get by in that way. So 
Garrett versus Severino, very close. I, I think you could flip a coin. I don't have a strong take on it. Waiver wire pitchers part three. Trevor Williams continues to pitch well. He was up against the Mariners. Five innings, one run, eight strikeouts to zero walks. And he's throwing a sweeper a lot more this season, 19% usage. And it's been a really good pitch for him so far. 136 batting average against with a 48% whiff rate. That is Trevor Williams. Michael Lorenzen keeps finding a way to pitch well. He was at the Twins, six innings, one run, four strikeouts, only five whiffs on 90 pitches. And Mitchell Parker turned in a quality start at the Atlanta Braves. Six and a third, three runs allowed, six strikeouts, 17 whiffs on 100 pitches. I thought that was uh, pretty impressive here from Mitchell Parker. Just in general, he's doing a good job limiting walks. He's getting ground balls. He, I didn't really know much about Mitchell Parker before he got called mm -hmm. up, Chris, but I, I've been kind of intrigued if I picked him up in any deeper leagues. Um, what are your thoughts here on, on Parker, Lorenzen, and Trevor Williams? Yeah, I mean, what, 17 whiffs in this one? Um, yep. That's pretty eye-opening. The The splitter has been a, an exceptionally good pitch for him so far this season. I, I feel like I should be more interested in Mitchell Parker than I have been, and I can't exactly put my finger on it, and maybe it's just a, a perceived lack of upside, right? Uh, you know, 21.5% strikeout rate even after uh, a couple of good strikeout games in a row but like three whiffs with the splitter eight with the slider today which he threw a little more um i agree he's pretty interesting you know his, his slider usage was 4.4 percent coming into this start it was 22 percent. so maybe that's a path to a little more upside for mitchell parker in a in a way that deserves more respect than he's gotten from us guys mm-hmm would you take him over anyone from the last group? Weathers, Gasser, Waka, and Garrett? Mitchell Parker? I could see the case for him ahead of Waka just on a, you know, Waka's old and Parker's young and hasn't had bad seasons at the major league level before. But I also recognize that that might not be the best reason to prefer one pitcher to another. All right, last group here includes J.P. Sears, who had a solid outing against the Astros. Six innings, two hits, one unearned run with only one strikeout. Uh, Cal Quantrill turned in another quality start. He was up against the Phillies in Coors Field. It was six innings, two runs, five strikeouts, 18 whiffs on 98 pitches. Who is this Cal Quantrill that we speak of? And uh, Ben Lively continues to pitch well for the Guardians. He was at the Angels. Seven innings, two runs, five strikeouts with uh, just seven whiffs here on 92 pitches, but he is down to a 280 ERA and a 118 whip. Are you buying any of these three, anything that they're doing, Chris? J.P. Sears, Cal Quantrill, and Ben Lively. Uh, no, not really. Maybe maybe Sears, like, in good matchups, especially at home, because it is a good part to, to pitch in. I Maybe Quantrill, like, I know this was at Coors Field, but I... I can't see any way he's going to be good more often than not at home, but maybe in the right matchups on the road there can be, but no, I, I don't see Quantrill. The biggest change is that splitter. He's throwing it 39% uh, of the time this season. It was 12% last year. It's been a good, but not great swing and miss pitch, but the results on quality of contact have been really, really good. Uh, one 188 expected batting average, 283 expected slugs. So maybe it's it just helps him survive, but there's no strikeout upside there, I don't think, even after this start. So I can't really get excited about Cal Quantrill.